What's good? It's your boy Daylight. You're now tuned in with RealFansRealTalk.com. Bye, y'all. The New York Football Giants will be back in the playoffs for the first time since 2016. Um, big shout out uh, to a guy who I had to had to had to warm up, you know, to before I had to get his name right. I at the beginning I didn't really care. I was taking my time with. It. I had to see where he was going to go with this thing. But uh, congratulations to Brian Daywell. Congratulations to the New York Football Giants on making it back to the playoffs. And uh, shout out to Daniel Jones. Um, he has definitely leveled up uh this season. Now, obviously, you know, he ain't no he ain't no Josh Allen, but we saw what Brian Dabo did for Josh Allen out in Buffalo. And I think he, you know, a lot of that he's he's instilled into into Dan Jones. You know, if he can just continue to improve, you know, I guess you know, I'll listen, I'll, I'll rock with it. If he played like he played last week. You know, if he can do that a little bit more consistently, I won't mind him coming back uh, next season and, uh, and, and and staying with the uh, with the Giants. But um, he did lock in that spot, so I'm happy about that. Yeah, Brian Dabo, I, I, I've been saying it for months, and you you've agreed with me. He is the coach of the year. Um, we don't even need to vote on it. We already know it's, it's his award. He's done a phenomenal job with Daniel Jones. Um, I think that again, you know, the high expectations to say Josh Allen because we know what Josh Allen is now. Yeah. But the progression is what you want to see. And the fact that Daniel Jones is so much better now protecting the ball, it doesn't throw the, the stupid interceptions, doesn't fumble and, and get you in good situations, kind of drive, drive after drive. The, the Giants don't really shoot themselves in the foot many times when you watch them play. They, they're pretty competitive every drive and they play, they make smart decisions. All that to me is a testament to the coaching of Brian Dable. It shows you what a good coach can do um, with just a little bit of talent because they ain't got no receivers. They ain't got nobody on the outside catching the ball. Jeez. But yet, he finds a way to get Saquon in open space. He finds a way to make Daniel Jones efficient. And then that defense continues to make plays. Kayvon Thibodeau. Kayvon Thibodeau looking like a just just shades of an OCU Manura out there. Yeah. Just He's looking kind of like that type he, of player. He, 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 caught, he caught a little flack yeah. for the celebration uh, next to Nick Foles. But I will say this, you know, for everybody who – who, who was, you know, kind of down on him for doing the little snow angel next to him. I'm sure he didn't realize the extent of what was going on with Nick Foles because the, the, the snow angel, he literally did right as he makes the hit yeah. and he gets off and he does that. So I'm sure at that point he's not even thinking, all right, this guy's going to have to get carted off the field right now. I, I don't I don't think he had – I don't think he knew at all that Nick Foles was hurt. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I don't think it's that big of a deal – um, you know, I understand what Jeff Saturday had to say. And I, I do respect what Jeff Saturday had to say about, like, why didn't one of the old linemen stand up for Nick Foles, which is right. In that moment, yeah. the old lineman is supposed to go check him. Like, yo, you know, what the hell are you doing? But you can't be mad at the young man for celebrating how, how well he's continued to play. And yeah. I'm sure there were certain vets on that giant sideline who reminded him, like, yo, you got to take, you got to relax a little bit. Just got to relax now, a little bit. You, you, yeah, you, ain't, you but, ain't got to the promised land just yet. Yeah, but but the, the young man... Listen, it's when when young dudes start playing like this and start to dominate because that's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. That's when you start to say, "I right, this might be something bigger with with the Giants than we really think." Because somebody like that on the D line who could like really affect the game and take over the game is a, it. It really changes the landscape of the way you look at a team, and he is living up to the hype. Um, you know, yes. people thought he should have been the number one pick last year in the draft, and he's mm -hmm. living up to that hype. So the Giants. Uh, have done a tremendous job with all that young talent on that team. Yeah, and he and I, I, I think I want to say two weeks ago with that with the uh, fumble recovery mm -hmm. the and score. Zone, yep, just, he he literally won that game for us. So yep. yeah, you know, future star in the making, but young man, you got to stay humble. You ain't yeah. you ain't put it you ain't put in the, the Michael Strahan work just yet. The Justin Tuck, you ain't even OC. You ain't put that work in yet. You getting there, young fella. But you know, just, just stay stay a little bit humble. Don't don't go too much over the top, because at the end of the day, you know, you guys far 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 exceeded expectations this season. But you know that can go away in in, in a heartbeat. So you know, just stay focused on on the task at hand. Continue to do 
uh, you know, the, the best job that you can on the defensive end and contribute as much as you can uh, to your team now that you guys, you know, have this playoff spot. Um, my question to you, Eric, is should uh, Brian Dable rest his starters in a Week 18 matchup versus the Philadelphia Eagles that really doesn't mean much to the Giants um, unless from the standpoint of, a Giants win could possibly stop them from being the number one overall seed. So I I think that it's, it's, it's going to be kind of a hybrid answer. I think he should rest them, but I don't think he should sit them the whole game, if that makes sense. I think okay. that he should play them probably a quarter, quarter and a half, mm-hmm. and then pull them for two reasons. One, again, they're going to have to play wild card weekend. The last thing you want is someone get hurt in week 18, and they're not available for that wild card game. Yeah. That's the first part of it. The second part of it, if you're Brian Dayball, you got to be strategic here. Whether the Eagles are the number one seed or let's say they were even drop to number two seed, you're probably going to see the Eagles in the second round if you do your job in advance. Mm-hmm. And I can't give you too much of my playbook right now because we would have already played twice in the regular season. Yes, exactly. We've already played twice. And now to play you a third time, I don't want to give you too much of what I think I can do against you. So, if I'm Brian Dayball, this is where you get strategic and you tell your defensive coordinator the same thing. Look, for about a quarter, quarter and a half, we're going to let the guys go. We're going to coach them up, too. We're not. We going to play to win. But we we want to hold some of the plays back. We don't want to show everything right now because if two weeks from now we're facing them again, I don't yes. want them to have so much film on us that they're, too, they're over-prepared to play us. I want them to kind of feel like there's still a little bit of mystery as to what we're bringing and how we're going to attack them. So in that regard... I would say again, strategically rest them. Don't just sit them the whole game. Strategically rest them. I agree. I, I think that is is the uh, the best way to go about it. Because again, you don't want you, you know you don't want us to 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 sit your starters, and then now you know because now they haven't played in, in 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 ten days. You know now they go in and then Rusty going into the wild card. So we want to still have them have the momentum going as much as yeah. You know, because again, that's that's that rivalry game I was talking about earlier. As much as I would love to see the Giants get the win and and stop Philly from getting the number one overall seed, I think it's 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 more important that we prepare ourselves to go the farthest that we can go uh, on this playoff run. And I think that means, like you said, you know, start start the game out. And hey, listen, because again, we don't know what we're going to get from Philadelphia as well. Okay, and, and when I say that, I, I'm, I'm talking about it in reference to Jalen Hurts, who's missed the last two weeks. Um, you know, so it might even make sense for Philly. Philly might even say, you know what, we're already locked in. Uh, you know, the Minnesota Vikings actually did us a favor by, uh, as you say, Eric wet in the bed uh, versus the, the Green Bay Packers. So do we really want to want to throw Jalen Hurts? back into a into a week 18 game that really doesn't mean anything to us and ultimately you know even even if we don't let's just say we wind up losing to the giants and we don't get the number one overall seed and we wind up being the number two seed at least we know all right jalen hurts is going to be 100 percent going into the playoffs and if you're the eagles you should feel like you can beat anybody in the NFC that you play that you would come across in the playoffs if Jalen Hurts is is back to or as close to 100% as possible and back to playing like the MVP candidate that he has been playing like throughout this season you know so we don't know what we're going to get on on from from the Philadelphia side of things either um but you know what they might want to throw him in there and just say look he's locking the number 1 seat because you know it's going to it, we don't want to have to to go through uh San Fran <laughs> to get to the to get to the Super Bowl and since San Fran continues to do their job and continues to win and of course you know Minnesota who's been struggling the last couple of weeks realistically even though they've been you know scratching out out wins this Packers loss you know is was a big loss for them on multiple levels. And now if you're Philly, you're fortunate, though, because, again, they lose. Because if Minnesota doesn't – if Minnesota wins that game, now it's like you got to play – you kind of got to play Jalen Hurts this week 
but them losing gives you the option to say, all right, you know what? I feel like we could beat the Giants even without Jalen Jalen Hurts. They played the Cowboys very well. The Saints game, not so much. Um, you know, Gardner Minshew, he didn't do as good as he did against against Dallas. But if you're the Eagles, you should feel like, you know what, we should still be able to beat the Giants um, without Jalen Hurts playing in this situation, especially from the standpoint of, you know, if you're the Eagles, I, I do think that the Giants will be resting guys because their team, especially when you – I mean, the wide receivers, the, the ones that we have get hurt all the time. Saquon, you know what I'm saying, you don't want to risk Saquon going down, you know, or Daniel Jones for that for that matter. So, you know, it just it just kind of makes sense. Um, but I, I think if you if you're Philly though, for me, what I'll be paying attention to for, from Philly is if you don't if you don't play Jalen Hurts, then I gotta assume that that injury is far worse than you've led me to believe. Because mm. if he doesn't play this week and he misses these three straight weeks, let's say they still beat the Giants though with Gardner Minshew, so he'll miss these three weeks, then he'll be off next week. That means it'll have been a full month that he hasn't yeah, played, played when you ask him to come back for a playoff game, and. Now, for me, you're flirting with disaster because we all know he's going to be a little rusty. The timing with the receiver is going to be a little off. And mm -hmm. now you put yourself in a situation where you could be upset in the playoffs because Jalen Hurts is just too rusty and he hasn't played in a month. So I, I would think that they would kind of follow the same model that I talk about the Giants. At the very least, put him out there, let him throw a little bit, let him run a little bit, kind of work through the rust with the, with the mindset of knowing that we win this game, we're going to be off next week anyway. But if you don't play him this week, I've got to assume that that injury is far worse than you've led us to believe, and that that would completely change the dynamics as to who we think would come out of the NFC. Personally, that's what I think. Yeah. Now, so just looking at the uh, looking at the schedule, the Vikings play at one o'clock. The Eagles Giants game is at four, so you do have some you know leeway there to make it a late scratch if you if you if if Minnesota winds up losing that game. And then you could be like, all right, well, Minnesota lost, you know, we sh we're still good to um to get the to get the number one seed, um, because I believe they'll still even if if uh, if San Fran wins, as long as the Eagles, as long as the Eagles win, they should still keep the, the number one seed. Yeah, the, the biggest threat to the number one seed for them is San Fran because they got the tiebreak over Minnesota. Remember, they beat them on that Monday night back in like week two or week three. Mm -hmm. So. Minnesota, like you said, blew the opportunity because they need to have the outright best record to get it. San Fran, I believe, has tiebreakers um, based on the conference record because right now San Fran has a better NFC conference record than Philly. Than Philly, okay. So if those two teams are tied, then I think San Fran gets number one, Philly drops to two, Minnesota goes to three. But, again, I just think that we've seen it too many times, especially we used to see it before the new playoff format. When two teams could get the bye, every year never failed. There would be a team that would rest the last week of the season and have yeah. the bye. And then when they played in the playoffs and it's like, oh, we ain't really played in like two or three weeks. And now we come out rusty and we get upset. So I would like to see the Eagles kind of finish through the finish line a little bit. Yeah. And like you said, if you know already, hey, we got the number one seed locked up, cool. But still put Jalen Hurts out there for a few series. Let him get some of the rust out. Let him get some of the timing out with mm -hmm. the receivers. Just, Absolutely. just, just with the mindset of like this is just to get them back in the rhythm. That's all it is. Because again, we're gonna, we're gonna be off next week anyway, so we're not putting him out there. We don't need him to, to play eight or nine series. Go out there and give me two or three series. Throw the ball a little bit, run around a little bit. All right, and then pull him, and then and we're good. Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Live from the camp. Uh huh. This. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real 